These next two transfers I like to consider together because they are both using specialty inkjet paper that you need to purchase from a store. So the first of these is the rubbing alcohol transfer and the particular paper that I use in my inkjet printer is the Staples decal paper. I only have used this decal paper. I buy it at the store Staples. If you wanna do this transfer and you know of another decal paper, I'm sure it will work. But the main feature of this is that the ink sits on top of this incredibly smooth surface. It does not penetrate the paper. It does not go into it. So when you spritz it with rubbing alcohol, all of a sudden that ink starts to run and you can quickly transfer it on to another substrate like watercolor paper, printmaking paper, and get something that looks a little bit more like an impressionist painting. When I spritz rubbing alcohol, I'm using just the most generic rubbing alcohol I can get at the dollar store. I don't think that the amount of alcohol in it matters because whatever you put in there, it's going to dissolve the ink as it sits on top of this decal paper. The most important things to know about the rubbing alcohol transfer is, one, when you spritz it, you need to spritz it lightly. You can't just shoot a full nozzle onto this thing because all that will do is create a huge puddle that runs down the center of your image. So I would spritz it all over lightly and then very, very quickly place it on your substrate paper. If you take time, it's just going to run all over the place and be a goopy mess. The amount of time you need to leave it on the substrate paper is pretty short. I just stick it on and then use something like a bone folder or a roller to smash it flat onto it. I can peel it right away. The ink will have transferred onto the paper and hopefully given you something that really feels like a painting and has a little bit of elegance to it. This is one of my favorite transfer processes and when I teach classes in person, this tends to be one of the favorites of the people in the class. The heat transfer process essentially uses iron-on paper, but for this particular project, we are not going to iron an image onto something like a t-shirt. We are going to heat up an object and have the image come off of our iron-on paper straight onto that object. So I am using a ceramic tile. I buy these at a local ceramic store. They are uncoated. They have no finish to them. And they're nice and smooth. That's incredibly important that you use the smoothest tile that you can get access to if you're going to do this process. I put it in a toaster oven. I leave it on broil, which heats up the top of it. I leave it in there for about 10 minutes. I'm probably leaving it in too long, but this is just how I uh, think. This is my superstition that 10 minutes of heating is good for it. Of course, you can heat more than one at a time. Then I have my image printed onto the t-shirt paper. Uh, this is very easy to come by. They sell it in my local Targets. They also sell it at Staples and sometimes at Walmart, but it is a material that absorbs the ink and if you buy the light paper, it will have holes wherever there is white. You'll be able to see through it. If you buy the paper that's marked as dark, it will not allow you to see through it. So for my purposes, if I'm transferring an image onto a ceramic tile, I kind of like to see the ceramic tile through the light parts of the image. I'm going to use the light image transfer paper. I have my substrate heated up. It's been in the oven for 10 minutes. Going to, of course, obey safety precautions and have oven mitts on and use spatulas. But I'm going to take it out very quickly and then place my paper directly onto it and smash it down. Now, if you waste any time, it's going to get way too cold, too fast, and it will not transfer the image the way that you want it to go on. My success rate for this particular process is around 50%. Uh, it helps if you have a very minimalist image that is easy to read. If you have a complicated image that doesn't have a lot of contrast and has a lot of nonsense in the background, uh, maybe it's readable as a photograph, it definitely will not be readable 
as a heat transfer image. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more creative tutorials, gear reviews and video art. Also check out our Patreon for weekly bonus videos and model photography sets.